Rupert Murdoch is the real Logan Roy from Succession, only he's a lot meaner. He spends a lot more money, and he's much, much more ruthless. Let's take a look. You don't just wake up one day and find that you've made 17.6 b, b b billion You only get wealth like that if you build yourself an epic empire the likes of which no one has ever seen before. Well, unless you inherited the epic empire your family made. Rupert Murdoch's story was a little bit of both. He actually inherited a chain of newspapers from his father when he passed while Murdoch was 22 years old. This was still the small time, though. Over the course of his career, Rupert Murdoch managed to pull together a massive news empire called News Corp that contained the likes of Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, Harper Collins, Sky News Australia, and so much more. He's credited for completely reinventing the concept of a newspaper for the modern world. And before you start thinking that this is going to turn into a video about the beauty of journalism, I mean that he reinvented news that was mostly concerned with actual news into the trashy tabloid journalism that most people claim they hate. You know, until they drop down a deep rabbit hole on the relationship between Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. I mean, come on, who cheats on Megan Fox, you know? As far as his personal style goes, he is addicted to business. He has made it clear that it's not about the money for him or the power, but about the grind. And that's been known to go a little too far at times. To give you an example, I'm going to need to edit things a little bit here. Uh, well, you see, Murdoch is well known for loving a certain F word that I'm not allowed to say. In fact, he's also well known for saying all of the other words in that same world. For instance, when it came time to motivate his workers at the Sunday Times to get one of their papers out on time, his uh, motivational speech to his workers went something like, uh, quote, you F-wit, you B-word, get this blanking newspaper out, end quote. Ah yes, inspirational. While you might think that has made him have some type of god complex, he evidently still sees himself as an underdog who is constantly going up against the world. Apparently no one told him that he owns like half of the world. You know, you'd think that he'd put that together after all of the controversies he's gone through. As you might expect, Murdoch and his companies have had a ton of controversies over the years. And I'm not just talking about the ones about how some of his news organizations cover world events. These are massive controversies that would destroy anyone else. In July of 2011, his companies were under investigation for hacking phones of prominent individuals. There were also massive investigations into corruption and bribery charges against Murdoch. He was also forced to, to admit that his companies were responsible for supporting election fraud claims that everyone knew were false. When this guy screws up, oh, he screws up big. And in the kind of ways that can reshape world events. When it came to the Fox News sexual misconduct allegations that have swarmed around the company for years, Murdoch was famous for brushing them off as nonsense or wanting to be insulated from knowing anything about them. What's funny is that Jesse Armstrong claims that Succession has nothing to do with the Murdoch family. Yeah, nothing about everything I've heard sounds like Succession at all. Let's uh, just shift gears a little bit here, pun intended, and uh, talk about how exactly Murdoch spends his sometimes ill-gotten gains. His car collection is all business all the time. Just look at one of his main rides, his Range Rover autobiography. This $140,000 SUV is elegant, comfortable, and it looks like it could run someone down if it needed to. And I'm sure that's the kind of thing he looks for when he looks for a car. The interior of this car was clearly made for businessmen. He also likes to cruise around in a fine Mercedes. I mean, who doesn't really? One of the cars he's been photographed with pretty often is his Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Like all of his cars, it is all business and all comfortable interiors. For $40,000, this is his most economical ride. Then there's his Mercedes Maybach S600, which comes complete with the massage chairs, cooling cup holders, ambient interior lighting, and all sorts of other fun features. He's definitely the kind of guy who is more used to being driven around than he is driving himself. My favorite of his cars, if I may, 100% is his Rolls Royce Ghost Black Badge. 
This $400,000 luxury ride is stunning on the outside, with all of the design excellence that you would expect from Rolls-Royce, but the interior might be even better. The car has multiple screens in its infotainment system. Something tells me that it's only ever used for playing the news. Rupert Murdoch doesn't really seem like the guy to be binging the masked singer, you know? The best part about this car is its starlight roof. Rupert Murdoch has a real estate empire that even Logan Roy would be jealous of. Just look at this man's New York City penthouse that is reserved for only the kind of people that are powerful people like Murdoch for 57 million. He managed to score the top three floors of the one Madison condominium tower. If that wasn't enough, he also paid for the full floor apartment below him. This entire place is now estimated at around 78 million. Anyone who has seen Succession knows that Murdoch's gotta have a classy English estate, something regal, but super cold. He purchased a 200-year-old manor in the Cotswold that cost him around 31 million. Apparently, the home evidently needs extensive work. I mean, you kind of figure that one out with the whole 200-year-old manor part, but he and his wife evidently had to stay in a smaller manor while they waited for the expensive reconstruction to happen, which I imagine would cost around another 10 million. I mean, there's no way you're getting a cheap contractor to fix a freaking downtown Abbey home. There's gotta be like, Five people tops in the world who do that kind of work. Even in Great Britain, every rich guy like Murdoch also has to have a country style estate somewhere in uh, California or the Hamptons. Murdoch has a vineyard in Bel Air called Moraga Vineyards. This is probably the perfect spot for parties that include heads of state, news anchors, and probably a few international assassins that he has a casual friendship with. It's a 13-acre property that ran him around 28.8 million, though he might make a good deal of that money back because the winery sells a Bordeaux-style red wine for around 175 bucks. That's definitely a start. Of course, the best thing about billionaire real estate is when billionaires take something from other billionaires. His most recent acquisition came when he snagged a giant Montana cattle ranch from the infamous Koch family. Now, he is the proud owner of Beaverhead Ranch, which stretches over 340,000 acres. It's a fully working cattle farm in southwest Montana that's pretty close to Yellowstone National Park. Aside from the cowboy aesthetic, it has a 28 mile long river that's perfect for trout fishing. The property also features like 25 homes, most of which are lived in by employees of the property, which is good because, well, frankly, I don't really see 91 year old Rupert hopping on a horse to steer cattle like a true cowboy. He's got people to do that for him. This was marked as the largest purchase in Montana history, which for Montana is really saying something. Does he really need a fully functional cattle farm? Probably not. Maybe he just got tired of being compared to Logan Roy from Succession and fancies himself more of a John Dutton from Yellowstone instead. To be honest, if you found out in the news that he once drove a dude out to a state border to get in a gun duel with him, would you even be a little surprised? I know I wouldn't be. Someone with the kind of stats that Murdoch does simply has to own their own yacht. It would just be wrong for him not to. His yacht is, of course, truly stunning. The Vertigo. You ready? It's a 220-foot vessel that can fit 12 guests in five cabins and then 11 crew members in four cabins. While the exterior of this yacht looks like a slice of paradise, if I'm being honest, it also looks like the kind of place where he mostly does giant business deals. I mean, the interior of this yacht basically looks like a fancy office space. You know those scenes in Succession where the Roy family has to decide who to sacrifice for the good of the company like a reality show? I bet that's what happens on Vertigo for sure! The ship ran him 50 million, but that's only a small part of yacht ownership. This kind of yacht costs around 5 million annually just to keep up with. Murdoch has also got a series of private planes. These include a 15.5 million Gulfstream G550 and a 55 million Gulfstream G650. Both of these planes are also all business all the time. You know, I'm pretty confident that there's a secret button on at least one of these planes that, you know, when he presses it, it drops an employee out over the ocean so he doesn't have to fire them. I mean, I'm sure you just need to use it once as a warning. And then boom, you really don't ever have to use it again. But the employees know it's there, you know? 
I don't know whether to be impressed or terrified of this man. Maybe a little bit of both. See ya!